Hey, what's up everyone? Paul from Great House Fun House, and in this video I will be featuring my burgeoning collection of uh, Verez Saraban soundtrack titles on vinyl. My love for the label started way back in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, the first music I ever purchased were soundtracks. I know, I was that geeky about this shit even back then when I was 12. Uh, the love for film scores runs deep. I still got a cassette and a few CDs from back then that I bought with my paper route money at my favorite record store. Uh, and now as a grown ass man, I'm full circling that shit by buying all the OG vinyls I can get my hands on. As you may know, some of those old first pressings can go for stupid money, uh, but I'm still gonna try to get my hands on many releases as I can. And these are the kind of releases where any blind buy is a good buy. Never been disappointed so far with the ones I've acquired. Uh, I do have a list of the top releases I wanna own, but uh, I have a feeling it's gonna take me a while to achieve this goal, but uh, it's the fun of it all. I'm gonna split this collection overview into six sections. Uh, my favorite releases I got so far, the European only releases, the blind buys, the new re-releases, the ones released here by a Canadian label through a license arrangement, and finally, the Verez Saraband releases I had bought on tape and CDs before I started my vinyl collection. But first, I just want to give you a quick run through of their history before I get started. So, uh, 1977 was the year Verez Saraband was born, so they're as old as I am, in Los Angeles when label owners Chris Cockler and Dub Taylor of Verez International Records, named after the uh, modern composer Edgar Verez, merged with then freshly new Saraband Records, which is uh, named after the dance form slash music ran by Tom Knoll, who became the vice president of the new company, Verez Saraband. Their ink-blocked logo you see on all their releases was designed by Dub Taylor. Uh, there's also Robert Tunson, who produced more than 1,400 soundtracks in his 30-plus years' time with the label uh, until he left last year. In his late teens, he had launched his uh, Master Films music label so that uh, previously unreleased scores by Jerry Goldsmith and John Williams would get releases and he made a deal with Verez Saraband to distribute them, so that's how it started for him. Their first ever release was for the score to the 1976 musical comedy The First Nudie Musical. Then came, in the early 80s, all the cool horror soundtracks we all want to own. Uh, releases like John Carpenter's uh, Halloween, Goblin's Dawn of the Dead, uh, Howard Shore's Videodrome, just to name a few. Uh, one of their big bestsellers at the time was for the music of the Twilight Zone TV series. Lots of big names got their scores released by the label. Uh, Alan Silvestri, Thomas Newman, uh, James Horner, James Newton Howard, John Barry, Elmer Bernstein, George De La Rue, uh, Basil Polidurus, John Carpenter, Howard Shore, and a lot of Jerry Goldsmith. Then in 1986, Richard Kraft came into the picture, which brought the number to four people running the whole label, and he was in charge of picking up the releases, negotiating the deals, uh, collaborating with the composers and sequencing the albums, and designing the covers. He made a distribution deal with MCA Records of Verez releases back in 1988, which put them on the map even more. Uh, they stopped releasing vinyls in North America in 1990, starting with Mr. Destiny, which was only released in Europe, through Germany or in South America through Brazil. Uh, the last vinyl release from that time was for the Alan Silvestri score to 1991's Ricochet. Their CD club had its day back in 1989 until 1992, and then started back in 2001, which is their main way to release old and new scores to this day, with the occasional vinyl releases, which I'll show you a few of those at the end of this video. In all, there's about 2,000 plus titles in their 40-year-old catalog, which is pretty damn impressive for a soundtrack record label. So that's it. That's their story so far. Now, let's start the collection overview with my favorite Verez Saraband vinyls I've acquired in the last few years. So I'm going to start with the uh, very first uh, soundtrack I got on vinyl from Verez Saraband. And it is The Hunger, the uh, vampire movie starring David Bowie, Catherine Deneuve and Susan Sarandon, uh, Tony Scott first movie. Uh, a vampire movie, very moody, uh, uh, very stylish vampire movie. The music is done by Michel Rubini and Denis Jaeger, and it includes excerpts from the works of Schubert, Bach, and Delib. Uh, this is uh, one of those that I, I, I see, I don't want to see a lot, but it's, it's a, almost a common title. Like you see this one, it's, I feel like they've pressed a lot of this one because I've seen it at least a dozen times when I go through uh, bins in record stores. 
but uh, it's a it's a very good one it's a very first good title to own the hunger then i got the only uh horror title in my collection so far and uh, i have so many more i want uh, it's uh, a nightmare on m street 4 the dream master uh, the music is composed by greg saffin I'm, i hope i'm saying this right um we go right here it's a it's a pretty solid soundtrack it's uh it's, it's all right it has its moments you know but uh yeah it's the only horror i have so far i uh, can't wait to get my hands uh just on the john carpenter ones for one uh, i would love to get those but uh as you may know they are crazy crazy expensive so there you go a nightmare on m street 4 then this was a blind buy that I got here. It is Down Twisted, music composed and performed by Berlin Game. So basically it's a 80s synth, synth score and a pretty good one at that. Like I've listened to it a few times and I uh, really dug it. This movie is from Albert Pune, uh, king of the 80s B movies. Uh, that dude's filmography is uh, as long as my arm. So, uh, and it is a canon release. I do love my Canon. Where's the, the logo? Right here. There you go, Canon. So yeah, right here. So it's a great little soundtrack. And the cover is amazing. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful. And then, finally, in my favorites I have so far. And I got this one um, like a month ago, I believe. And it is The Fly. David Cronenberg, the music by Howard Shore, his go-to composer for many of his uh, earlier movies. Uh, the music uh, was from the London Philharmonic Orchestra, right here. So uh, I know there's a, they've re-released it. Uh, there's a version of it right now on their website. I believe they, it's a green-colored vinyl. But uh, I much prefer owning the OG version of this. And I have. So there you go for my uh, favorite uh, releases from the SR band so far. All right, so now on to the European only releases. Uh, like I mentioned before, this was towards the end of 1990 where they stopped releasing them in the United States or in North America. And uh, they were only released in Europe, like in Germany or Brazil. Uh, most of the ones I have are from Germany. So, uh, all right, let's start up with The Hard Way, right here. A, a fine comedy, uh, one of my favorite from Michael J. Fox. Actually, they just, uh, Kino Lorber just released the Blu-ray of this. If you've never seen it, uh, it's, it's very funny. It's a very New York movie as well. Uh, the music is from Arthur B. Rubenstein. It's a, a jazzy score, very kicky, jazzy, jazzy score. And uh, I'm going to show you the back right here. So yeah, this one I got in Germany. Uh, I know it's released probably on CD as well. But uh, yeah, I uh, really, really love this uh, soundtrack right here for The Hard Way. And then uh, a movie that's never been released on Blu-ray so far, but I, I hope it will be. And uh, it's from one of my uh, favorite composer, Alan Silvestri, and it is for Ricochet the Denzel Washington uh, movie uh, starring uh, John Lidgo, who plays a psychopath who, uh, who's after him. Uh, the only thing with this soundtrack that sucks is that when you play it, you just hear a crinkly sound and it pops. And it's not because of my table. Apparently all the copies uh, does the same thing. So at least I, I do have the MP3s uh, there somewhere, but it kind of sucks that uh, you know, I can't play it on my table without hearing the pops and the clicks and whatnot. But uh, yeah, there you go right here for Ricochet. Another favorite comedy of mine from uh, Michael J. Fox. And it is Doc Hollywood. And uh, the music is composed by Carter Burwell. And uh, it's kind of like uh, good old boy music, uh, you know. Uh, violins uh, it's very calm and tranquil <laughs> I really love it it's, it's great and the movie is uh, it's also very good uh, here's the back right here 
So there you go. I also bought this one from a German seller. It was a, a German release. So there you go. And then finally, my last uh, European release I bought so far. And it is for Out for Justice, Steven Seagal. And uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but it's uh, it, it was water damage in the mail. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it sucks when that shit happens. It's very, it rarely does, but when it does, especially for like a rare title like this one, you know, but uh, this is a, a various artiste soundtrack mixed with uh, David Michael Frank's score. Uh, there's a lot of country music on this one. There's, uh, I believe, a, a song from uh, uh, Mr. Seagal himself, as you may not know or know that uh, he's got a music career, you know, so good for him, I guess. Um, so yeah, there's a few uh, instrumental tracks from David Michael Frank towards the end of the, uh, the album, but the rest is all like songs, uh, that you hear in the movie. So, uh, yeah, there you go for the, uh, European only releases. Now on to the blind buys. Uh, like I said in my intro, uh, any blind buys from Vres Saraban is, will always be good. They, they were good curators of uh, what score they were putting out. So, uh, yeah, let's start up with uh, Last Embrace right here. Uh, music is composed by Miklos Rosa. And uh, look at this cover. It is amazing. It's, uh, I believe, a Jonathan Demi movie. Am I? Am I? Yeah, it is Jonathan, Jonathan Demi. There's uh, also Roy Scheider and um, John Glover's in this and uh, Christopher Walken and... Uh, yeah, there you go. There you go for uh, Last Embrace. Up next, we have The Year of Living Dangerously. And the, the music is uh, by Maurice Jarre. This is another one of those that's uh, f a fairly common Verez Saraband title. I've seen it a few times uh, in, in, some, in some bins out there. I got this one when I was in San Diego back in January 2019. It feels like it was 10 years ago, but it was uh, two years ago. Uh, yeah, it's a Mel Gibson movie, Sigourney Weaver, directed by Peter Weir. So yeah, there you go, The Year of Living Dangerously. This is a score composed by Basil Polyduris, and it is a Farewell to the King, right here. It's a movie from John Milius, starring Nick Nolte. And uh, yeah, this was a, a total blind buy. Uh, never heard of the movie. I saw the trailer since. Uh, but uh, yeah, another one added to my uh, collection right here. Another soundtrack I've seen a few times in bins out there. And it is uh, Meetings with Remarkable Men. Uh, music by Thomas D. Hartman. And additional music by Lawrence Rosenthal. So yeah, there you go. Up next is a Christopher Reeves movie from uh, 1985, and it is The A Aviator, right here. Uh, there's also uh, Rosanna Arquette in there. The music is composed and conducted by Dominique Frontière. Can't say I've seen it. It's directed by George Miller, uh, obviously of uh, the Mad Max movies. So uh, there you go. How about some James Horner with uh, Where the River Runs Black? And uh, this is one of those I, I bought a month ago. I bought like six or seven of them and it was in the batch. So of course, our, when I see the, the logo, I don't hesitate. I buy right away, even though if I, even if I don't know the movie, uh, I get it. So this is a movie directed by Christopher Kane, uh, starring uh, Charles Durning, Peter Horton, and uh, all those all those people right here and it is where the river runs black another blind buy where i don't know what the movie is about and it is uh, good morning babylon uh, music composed and conducted by nicola piovani it uh, stars um vincent spano there's uh, greta Skaki. She was a foxy lady back in the day. Where is she now? I don't know. And uh, Charles Dance, right here. So, uh, there you go. 
Up next, a movie I actually saw in the 80s when it came out uh, as a kid, and it is The Manhattan Project, uh, music composed by Philippe Sard, and uh, it's a kid that uh, builds an atomic bomb and uh, shows it at a science fair. So there you go, right here. Another movie starring uh, John Lithgow in this, and uh, Cynthia Nixon, pre uh, Sex and the City. And uh, yeah, there you go. The Manhattan Project. And the last title from The Blind Buys, and it's Sky Bandits. Uh, music composed and conducted by Alfie Kabi Kabiljo. <laughs> and and uh, it's, it was performed by the National Philharmonic Orchestra. Love the cover of this as well. I love all these 80s covers. It's a shame they don't do that shit anymore. Uh, it stars Scott McGuinness, Jeff Osteridge, and Ronald Lacey. Who are these people? <laughs> and directed by Zoran Perisic. All right, sure, why not? So yeah, there you go, Sky Bandits. Uh, up next, I'm gonna show you the newer re-releases. So once in a while, Varez Saraban will re-release uh, old titles from their catalog. Usually it's for Record Store Day. Um, like this year, they have seven titles they'll be uh, releasing like uh, or re-releasing. Like Lara Croft is one. There's The Goonies, like a picture disc, uh, The Iron Giant, all three Matrix, uh, two from John Carpenter, Ghost of Mars and Village of the Dam. I actually talked about this in a video for Record Store Day. I list all the, the vinyl being released on those two days. So if you want to check it out, you are more than welcome to do so. And uh, on February 10th, uh, earlier this year, Verez had a one-day sale to celebrate Jerry Goldsmith, who would have been 92 this year, but who sadly passed away back in 2004. And I finally got to pull the trigger on the vinyls I'll show you. I've been waiting a few years for the prices to drop. The first one being Gremlins 2, the new batch. And uh, I swear, I was looking at the listing on the Verez Sarban website at least once a week. So yeah, I wanted it. Uh, this is one of those scores that only had a vinyl European release when the movie came out. Uh, it's back in 2015 that they released for the first time a two CD version of the soundtrack. And uh, of the entire score, which was not the case with the 1990 release. But uh, yeah, if you're a, a Gremlins fan, one and two, uh, it is very much worth uh, getting. Like you have a whole, uh, whole thing right here, like a gatefold situation with pictures and a, a, a whole text written by Robert Tunson right here. So there you go. Uh, really love, really love this release right here of Gremlins 2, the new batch. I also got 1976 The Omen right here. And uh, this is a limited edition on white vinyl for uh, 666 copies. Uh, Gremlins 2 had 750 uh, that they made and they're still available, both of them. Uh, this is the, the is one and only score when he won the Oscar. So I'm going to show you right here. I got uh, 549 out of 666. And uh, this one, they decided to do a colored vinyl for it. I'm going to show you right now. It's all in a beautiful wh white right here. Show you. There we go. So yeah, there it is. So yeah, I uh, really love the score. A classic horror score. And um, it's amazing that he only won one Oscar in his entire long, prolific career. But uh, at least he got one for a very good score, like The Omen. And uh, now on to the ones released here by a Canadian label. Jackal Records is the label in question. And uh, the info I got on them is that uh, Trend Records were the Canadian distributors for various Saraban titles here until uh, Master Film Music, the label Robert Thompson started in his teens, I talked about earlier, came along and uh, Jackal Records was Trent Records' imprint label. Uh, they released about 20 Verez albums between 1983 and 86. Apparently, Verez has no info on such a deal, but it was probably a small license arrangement or they were bootleggers. So that's the information I got. 
Uh, Masters Film Music then uh, handled Canadian distribution from then through 2012. I found three titles from the Jackal Records label and the first one being Enemy Mine. Uh, the music is composed and conducted by Maurice Jarre. Uh, movie came out in 1985. Science, science fiction movie with uh, Dennis Quaid and uh, Lou Gossett Jr. Uh, it's a Wolfgang Peterson film. So yeah, that's uh, that's the first Jackal Records uh, I got right here. Then uh, another Verez title I see. I want to say a lot, but I, I've seen a few times. And it is for Witness, and uh, its uh, music is composed again by Maurice Jarre. And uh, what's weird is this one is a Jackal release, but they still managed to put the Verez logo on it. So I don't know what the hell is, go is going on here, because uh, you can see also the Jackal logo here. And uh, yeah, mo the, the Amish movie starring Harrison Ford. Uh, oh, another movie directed by Peter Weir, like a, a Year of Living Dangerously, I showed earlier. So yeah, Witness right here. And finally, the last Verez Sarban soundtrack I have in my collection so far. And it is for an 80s comedy that's uh, not as talked about as the others from these actors, from these comedians. And it is Spies Like Us, uh, music composed and conducted by Almer Bernstein a John Landis movie. So there you go, right here, you got the Jackal Records logo again. And uh, yeah, so uh, Chevy Chase, Dan Aykroyd, uh, Dan Aykroyd's wife, Donna Dixon, uh, Bernie Casey's in this, uh, and uh, yeah, Spies Like Us. And now uh, just a little bonus, uh, the ones I got that I bought on cassette and, uh, and CDs before I started my vinyl collection. So I got these uh, like in uh, around 1990, 91, uh, 92. Uh, I only got one cassette and it is for Die Hard 2, Die Harder. And uh, that's uh, <clears throat> definitely uh, a score I want uh, on vinyl, which was only released in Europe as well, that one. And uh, as you can see right here, the tape. Uh, one of my favorite cuts, I guess, from this one, and it's not even a, uh, a score from, uh, is it uh, Michael Kamen who did this one, I believe? I think it is. Yes, it is Michael Kamen. And uh, it is uh, Philendia, which is the, the final track you hear in, whoops, in the movie. And it is the, uh, the national anthem of, uh, I wanna say Iceland or, is it Finland? No, Finland, sorry, because uh, Renny Arlen is from Finland, the, the, the movie director. But yeah, this is uh, the, the one and only tape I got in 1990 when the movie came out. And when it comes to CDs, um, I got this one here, right here, which is the, the Batman trilogy. Uh, Batman, Batman Return, and Batman Forever. Uh, the, it's... Uh, done by Joel McNeely and uh, recorded from with the Royal Scot Scottish National Orchestra right here. So basically all the cues from uh, both Danny Halfman score and Elliot Goldenthal for Batman Forever and the TV, the TV theme from uh, back in the 60s. So there you go, the Batman trilogy. And then um, what else did I get? I got Aliens on CD, uh, you know, music from James Horner, probably my favorite from James Horner. And uh, one of the cues on this one was heard in uh, so many trailers for action movies in the late 80s and early 90s. Actually, Verez is releasing this again uh, on green vinyl for Record Store Day coming up. It's one of their titles they're releasing. So there you go right here, Aliens. And then the last CD I got and uh, I would love this to get a, a, a vinyl release, but I, I doubt it'll ever come out. And it is for Of Mice and Men. The music is composed by Mark Heisham right here. And uh, yeah, I, it's very random buy. But uh, when I saw the movie in theaters back then, uh, uh, the score was the thing that really, you know, uh, popped out. And uh, yeah, there you go, Of Mice and Men. 
And you know what? That is it for my Verez Saraban Vinyl Soundtracks Collection Overview. Please like, share and subscribe. Check me out on Instagram, Reddit and on Facebook. In the comment section below, let me know what Verez Saraban vinyls you have in your collection. What's your uh, prized possession? Uh, while I was preparing this video, I thought to look for uh, Facebook groups that would be talking about Verez Saraban vinyls. There's a few pretty inactive ones. So what the hell, I went and created my own, you know, to talk about those releases, to show off what you have. Uh, if you have some for sale or want to do an exchange, that can happen too, if you can bear to part with them. I don't know, I thought it would be a good idea. So Verez Saraban colon Vinyl Soundtrack Collectors is the name of the group. The link will be in the description below. More videos coming soon. What I'm working on right now is my Hip Hop Soundtracks Collection Overview, so come back for that if you enjoyed this one. So thank you for watching, and I'll say to you, ciao bye for now.